good afternoon to everybody. So today we'll discuss about our solution, which is a digital twin model. Allow me to help, uh, allow me to introduce myself along with my co-authors as well. So I am Shomait Goshami. I'm working as a test automation and AI ML architect in Ericsson. And I, have, I am having total 10 plus years of experience in software industry. My hobby is something with uh, singing and acting along with me. My co-author is uh, Mr. Manu Labidin, who is uh, the senior test automation and AI ML architect in Ericsson. He's having uh, more than 16 plus of years of experience in the industry. And along with that, Navina Kirti is also here is having seven plus of experience in uh, uh, software industries, working as a senior test automation engineer in Ericsson. Now, let us uh, go to uh, take a look about the problem statement that currently we are having. Now, the problem statement is saying like 40% of testing effort that currently we are spending in the requirement analysis as well as the test case preparation. If the requirements are actually complex, so then maybe that effort will be also getting extended. Now, if I'm also having, uh, if also I'm having uh, uh, practitioners who is having like uh, new joiners of a project, so then maybe they are also having a lack of domain knowledge or application knowledge. Now, in that case, they might come like they will not able to cover the entire end-to-end -end scenarios of their application. That derives the lack of test coverage in terms of positive as well as negative scenarios. Let's take an example like if a user story is having a login functionality and it's saying like, okay, so you are, um, if you are providing a valid credentials, then you will be able to log in. But in the user story, it's not mentioned like, okay, so if you are providing invalid credentials or kind of blank credentials, then you will get an error message that is not present. But as a software tester, I also need to test that one. So in that case, if I am a new joiner, maybe I do not have that much of knowledge. Maybe I will skip that portion and that may be uh, having a defect over there. So it's very important to have a proper positive as well as negative scenarios as well. And the last but not the least is like we whenever we are providing our test cases to the test reviewer. So test reviewer also the responsibility of the test reviewer is to check whether all the scenarios, all the test cases are actually covering all the requirements and not. So let's suppose if a user story is having 50 to 60 test cases and it assigned to a reviewer. So first the reviewer also needs to go through the requirement and then they need to go through the one after another, all the test cases. So it will be again like a very time consuming job. Now, all these things are actually related to uh, timing. So we need to also check like how this problem can be overcome. Now, what we thought of like, okay, so in our uh, digital twin model, what we are trying to propose. Now, the first thing in the left-hand side, you can see the left-hand side are the physical or the manual activities that currently we are doing. First, we are having the requirements, we're getting the requirements, and then we are thinking like, okay, so what kind of positive or the negative scenarios can be uh, identified? And based on that, I'll start my test case writing and all. Second, I also need to understand like, okay, so what kind of actions or the conditions that I need to find out, and then only I can provide you, okay, so what will be my expected outcome? But if you can see in the right hand side, the exactly replica of the manual activities, if I'll transform this one digitally, how it will look like. So if the requirements that currently I'm having, so if the requirements uh, which I can convert this one into a flow diagram, so then the flow diagram will help me to understand the uh, okay so what kind of requirements you are having in a texture format in this instead of that if i'm having like okay a proper flow diagram that flow diagram will help me to understand that entire user story in a better way now that will help in the flow diagram and that will help who will be the target audience for this flow diagram it will help the test designer who will basically write down the test cases. Now, again, the developers as well, because developer, if they will get that flow diagram, whenever they are developing their code, they will also get to know like, okay, so uh, this is actually like uh, these these scenarios I have missed and I need to check. Okay, so these uh, scenarios maybe I can add during my coding as well. Now, last 
with the also with the reviewer so reviewer as i mentioned like okay so the reviewer also needs to go through the the uh, uh, all the each and every test cases for a uh, review purpose so instead of that if the flow diagram will be provided to the reviewer so then maybe they can also understand okay uh, from that particular uh, uh, diagram itself like okay so i don't need to go through the test cases uh, 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 i mean i just go through the diagram i saw like okay so these are the flows that is actually covered in the test cases so i just check that quickly okay so this is a flow diagram i check that one it's appropriately fine uh, i just send that review comment to the tester that's it i do not need to go to the further now uh, let us uh, go through so this is our uh, uh, idea now let us look at take a look like how this idea can be implemented so manuel over to you like i mean, I mean manuel will over, I mean, explain how this can be implemented over to you manuel we have seen now so far uh, regarding that uh, business infographics let us talk about the solution approach so any automation ai ml based solutions there are certain stages in that life cycle so here also to simplify the process we have something called five stage approaches the first one is a collection of the data source or the collection of the data where we need the user story from the project and this user story can be behavior driven development written way or can be in a gwt format like in a, any test cases if you see there are three things that are majorly important what is given to us the prerequisites what are the logic is there like when we have to apply kind of conditions and then we go for an output now coming to that other than the user story whatever we collect it can be in a different format also like a requirement specification document as well there should be a jira connectivity if you want that the solution could be integrated as a plugin feature to any test management tool as for example the jira connectivity once this data collection is done we are going towards a process called eda exploratory data analysis it is very commonly known in ai ml concept where we have to go and check the data distribution very well several parsing technique pre processing technique to be applied and if that particular format of the data is not in gwt format that is given when then then we have a mechanism internally to transform it towards this gwt format now doing this we are using python code then words towards this feature engineering we need to identify certain features we need to understand that what kind of context is there in between what kind of feature we can realize and we can finalize to make a model and that is why nlp plays a very important role because in a project the requirements of the user story written by person to person varies it's a natural language we need to understand it very well the feature need to be developed and finally we'll go to the model selection in that model selection there can be an option that is a supervised learning that means we have a very good relevance or reference from the previous historical data sometimes we do not have that relevance then we should go ahead with the unsupervised learning mechanism and it is a purely nlp engine we have uh, come up with with our solution which can deal with naturally whatever people are written in their user story or in the requirement document that can be leveraged and definitely train and test is very much needed before the model is get ready and can be used and finally the predicted output are the two areas here one is the data flow diagram that actually we will get the flow chart whatever the way that requirement or user story written and somebody can easily understand if a pictorial view comes up in front of the screen is like a flow chart and then some artifact can also be embedded with it so that the flow chart can be used further for the analysis later on it can be used by the developer to think through if i have to develop the code what kind of logic i need to build for the application for a test reviewer he can check like a lot of test cases need to be reviewed but before that he can do something exercise by going through the user stories or requirements to understand each and every flow flow very clearly and finally the test case designer who need this because he need to understand the application very well and go ahead for writing the test cases so let's move on we are talking about certain scenarios to be captured through this particular digital twin model 
Now, if you consider in your test cases way that whatever you are handling certain user stories and then coming up with your test cases in a testing scenario, you will find out there are totally four kinds of scenarios can happen. Scenario one talks about you have a user story where the user story doesn't have anything match earlier. There is no relief reference as, at all. Then also our solution is capable to give you the flowchart. And it is a purely in an automated way utilizing Python. Going to the scenario two, where user story have certain references. For example, if you are thinking about a new plan is getting launched, is a postpaid plan, something getting launched, and we need to test it. That means the user story is similar. We might have tested earlier uh, plans in a uh, earlier plans to check different scenarios, but the scenarios could be different here. It can be used for consumer, like uh, enterprise consumer. It can be used by individual consumer. That means the scenarios here is different. In that case, our solution is capable to provide you the flowchart and give you that where the scenarios differ. Third scenario is more interesting that user story matches. That means the plans are different, but the user story looks like similar. Scenarios are also matching. That means it is both for enterprise user, but the actions are different. One will try to hit with certain different types of nodes and other we have to connect to the other nodes to validate the scenario. So this is a more complex part where definitely AI will come into the picture to find out the positive and negative scenarios both to be tested. So scenario three also is covered through our solution. And the final one, in all the cases there is a match and that is a kind of a supervised technique. You have a user story, all your relevance is there, if we drill down more, the scenario is also matched and your actions like the GWT is also matches. Then also our solution using a supervised learning can give you a flowchart. Now let us deep dive into more into that, how we can use this digital twin model with respect to certain example. Over to you, Shomadito. Yeah, uh, thank you, Manu, for explaining uh, the uh, solution uh, approach. Now, uh, let us look at through like how now we saw like okay so how digital twin model would work now uh, let us look at through like after working how it will provide the output now in this example now you can see in the left hand side i'm having one example user story all these user stories are written in a textual format so by reading through this uh, user story maybe i'll be having some difficulty to understand like okay so how the flow will be the right hand side you can see that the user story is actually converted into a flow diagram now by reading through this flow diagram it will be easier for a test designer it will be easier for developer it will be easier for the reviewer as well as a business user like what is the flow that is actually uh, the intention of the requirement here it's actually you can see the title itself it's saying like it's a output from pure automation that means if i'm having a user story if i do not have any kind of historical reference for that user story in the traditional aiml model what we used to see is like the accuracy score will be low and i will i'm not able to provide you a proper output the uniqueness of the digital twin model is like where AI is not able to identify the scenarios, automation will come into the picture and automation will provide you the flow diagram which actually mentioned in your user story itself. Now, by this way, you can able to I mean, convert your user story into a flow diagram. Now, this is, I mean, the exactly twin model that actually we are providing. Now, let us look at through how artificial intelligence is actually empowering digital twin model to help to understand an end-to-end -end coverage. Now, I'll show you a quick demo for that one. So just give me a minute.
So let me know if you are able to uh, see my screen. So here, this is one of the uh, input uh, test data, what I need to feed into our digital twin model as an input. So this will be kind of like an end user is actually trying to do. Now on the left hand side, this is kind of a data format that we are expecting. So only I just need to uh, have like user story and their acceptance criteria. That's it. So the user story and acceptance criteria here's here in the acceptance criteria. It's just uh, is saying like, OK, so if I want a 5G access, so then maybe I I just need to uh, change my APN settings. You can see is a when mentioned with the CFSS fixed mobile 5G access request, then the user may change that APN and then it should create a mobile subscription with a changed APN. This is only as written in my input data sheet. So let me uh, copy this Excel path from here and let us go to the uh, let us go to the code to see like how it will work. So what I'll do like so first let us run this code and it is actually saying me like okay so enter the file path of the current user story and the acceptance criteria. I just copied the path from where that input uh, Excel data was present. So I hit on that enter button. Now what it's actually showing like, okay, so enter the sheet name. So I'm just providing the sheet name as well, which is a sheet one that we just saw. Now I'm just hit on that. I mean, I'm just going to the next one and then I don't need to do anything. It, it will just show me like, okay, so how it will generate the output for me. Now you can see like it's it's actually it's trying to process it's checking the the similarity score as manual mentioned like we are using spacey and all for that one and finally it will provide you a flow diagram for you now the best thing that you can able to see in the digital twin model is like if i go to the uh, when below here you can see if you remember properly like if our in input data we are having only one vein condition over there right and that was mentioned like for the cfss fixed mobile 5g access request the user may change the apn that's it and then it will provide that output but you can see in the flow diagram that we are generating here also having another scenario which is saying users sent a mobile subscription without 5G access. In that case, what will happen? And in that case, there's a separate output. And after that, it will end the exact scenario. So here you can see from a positive and a negative, these two portions are also covered. Now, AI will help us from a, this particular scenario is maybe not it's not mentioned in the current user story but similar kind of user stories may be mentioned in other projects in maybe other user stories now whenever i am providing a end-to-end -end flow diagram to you i am actually providing you in terms of all aspects like what can be a possible scenarios for you now this is the uniqueness of the digital twin model where it will help the test designer to think from an end-to-end -end perspective as well positive as well as negative now let us again go back to the uh, the, the final slides. Uh, let me know if you are able, uh, able to see my screen, and I'll hand over to Manuel to share the novelty of the the solution. What uh, what is actually the solution of the digital twin model? Yeah, over to you, uh, Manuel. far right uh, this is something very interesting like um, physically that what a human tester does in a project similar things are beyond this the digital twin model is going to support the testers the testing project basically the novelty of the solution that we can see the test scenario uh, or i can say the blueprint of the use cases you can get at once to design the test cases to even to develop your code or even to review certain test scenarios a flow diagram which is actually a pictorial diagram which means a lot picture says a lot to understand the better way the user story lack of domain knowledge because in current days like project members are not so experienced enough many many new members are joining to the project they might have lack domain knowledge they might do not have the vast experience to the application one-to-one -one connectivity so that domain knowledge though we are lacking but still this digital twin model could help you to understand the positive scenario negative scenario everything Definitely, it will improve the time to market, right? Because this scenario readiness will be much easier and uh, it will not be very time consuming. And finally, the quality of the review, the example which Shomo just now shown, we have the positive flow, but parallelly, we have seen there is a good option that we can know the negative scenario flow if we have a historical references. So that's it. Welcome to our digital twin model.